You want a free Battle Bond preview card? You look like a show host. What? A preview card for Battle Bond? Sure, what's it gonna cost us? Six, and two white mana. Oh, not mana cost. Nothing, like I said. Here, uh, take the card. Thanks, mister. Let me see this. <gasps> Whoa, thanks! I can't wait to show the guys! I'm Phil DeLuca. I'm Shivam Putt. And we are Commander In. Thanks for listening, everybody. We put a spotlight on community issues, but never, ever talk about three banned topics. Religion, (laughs) politics, and Hearthstone. We appreciate all the help that you give to the show. And if you really want to help the show out, tell a friend, rate us wherever it is you get your podcast from, and leave comments both on our page and wherever you get your podcast from, like we said. So if you really want to support us, visit patreon.com slash commander at MTG and donate a buck a show that really, really helps a lot. You can also go to our PayPal link. This is awesome too, which is at our website, commander at MTG.com slash donations. And don't forget to visit us on YouTube, comment, rate, and subscribe and play us to the end. That actually matters. Each week, we like to call out three of our Patroni. We are really grateful for every one of you. Ordinarily, we would call out three, Shivam, but this episode, we're doing the Hall of Fame. Whoa, what? (laughs) Yep, yep, the Hall of Fame. (laughs) This is where we'll uh, call out some of our top patrons. Maybe every month or so we'll do this and we'll add new people to the list every time. Sounds good. Yeah, and you'll hear some of them have changed their names as we requested in the last episode. (laughs) Our Patron Hall of Fame is growing. And these are the people who've contributed to the show the most. And you know what? We're going to read out some of their names. Are you ready for this? For certain, sure. Let's do this. Let's start with Justice, Trevor Lindo, Alexander Kearns. And Henry Birch, Jesse Durant, and Akira Thompson. Electro Josh, Cameron Fowler, Sandro Hodel, Marcus Ogier, Robin Koss, Russell Lee. Elder Demon Highlander. Thank you very much, Elder Demon Highlander. Is that you, Buzz and Luck? <laughs> Matt Hoffman and Dan Krause. The famous Henry Stukenborg. David Mitchell, our editor. Our editor. And frightfully despondent yet fighting the good fight nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, folks. This is really our pleasure to celebrate you. We genuinely appreciate you, and we could not do this without you. Yep. And for those of you who want really cool names, just like Elder Demon Highlander <laughs> and Frightfully Despondent Yet Fighting the Good Fight Nonetheless, you have 140 <laughs> characters across both names in Patreon. So go up, change your name, and next time we'll read it out that way. It's so good. I love it. <laughs> it really is. Speaking of celebrating our patrons, two lucky patrons will participate in our next game show show. You must be an active patron of the show as of June 8th to qualify. The patrons, Shivam, this is what scares me the most. We're just lucky it's not our guest this week either. Well, it could be actually. He's a patron of the show. Oh, spoilers. The patrons will form a team and play against you and me. Oh, no. And Sean, of course, is going to come up with three of his game shows, including hopefully EDH Wrecked, because that's really popular. More like Phil and Shivam get wrecked. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And if you haven't heard the Commander's Brew on our show recently, then go back and listen to that. We'll put a link right here in the video and in our show notes. But what you want to do is tell us why it should be be you and you have to do that by sending us a one minute audio recording in wav format make sure you say your name as well because we're going to get a bunch of these and we don't want to lose it and you should send us a letter and send the link to the one minute file and that letter to cast at commander mtg.com send us a letter you say yeah send us an e letter as the kids call it oh i'm excited this is gonna be so cool it's gonna be really awesome and you know what shivam it doesn't end there Because you, sir, are a judge. You don't want to put that in my hands. (laughs) (laughs) Well, our judges are going to review each 
and every entrant and select the participants. The judges are the hosts, that's you and me, Shivam, plus Sean, and Mr. Big Bents himself, Andy Bentley. He's going to help us select. That's going to be cool. He may be going by a different name in, in certain Patreon circles these days. Awesome. Let's do it. This is going to be a lot of fun, and I hope to see lots of creative entries from you guys. Yes. Now, we have a guest on the show. He's been really quiet. It's uncharacteristic. Did his mic die? We don't know. We'll have to find <laughs> out. This week, we have a Battle Bond preview card, and this is Monday, the 21st of May. So this is among the first Battle Bond preview cards that people will see. And, Shivan, we brought someone on to help us introduce this to the world, didn't we? Who could possibly tell us about the <laughs> brand new set Battle Bond that's going to be coming out in June? Hmm. I mean, if you had to select anybody, you would select maybe the lead designer of the set, wouldn't you? I mean, I guess. But do you think that he would be available to come and jump on the podcast <laughs> at 10 seconds notice? On short notice, exactly. <laughs> Less than one hour before we are speaking these very words. Thanks for coming on, Gavin. What a no, pleasure. it's my pleasure, and I am so excited about Battle Bond. I have worked on this set so much, and it was such a wonderful passion project for me and the team to put out there. And I don't have any kids. I am not married. <laughs> but I feel like the feeling you get when you wake up at 2 a.m. and can't get back to sleep because you're staring at the ceiling and trying to figure out how to fix your set is not dissimilar from having a child. Now, it's cert- probably easier because you're making a magic set, but man, it is <laughs> it is something. So I, I put a lot of time into Battle Bond, many, many hours and late nights and thinking about it everywhere that I went, and I'm so proud of what we came up with and really excited for you guys to all get the, get the chance to play with it. Yeah, I'm guessing that Battle Bond doesn't kick you in the back when you're sleeping at 2 in the morning, <laughs> the way, I say, some of our children might. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> some days that might be easier though getting kicked in the back yeah i believe it <laughs> yes thank you gavin verhey for joining us lead designer of the new set battle bond Woo-hoo. but wait there's only two of us and you do you happen to know where our third co-host went oh sean yeah i think i saw him out trapping rabbits <laughs> <laughs> you saw him out trapping rabbits have you been in england recently no he was actually in seattle it's weird happenstance uh, but you know it's, it's summer now it's rabbit season it's rabbit breeding season and they're everywhere actually <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know for a true story not that that wasn't true but that's more debatable for an actual true story near where i live about once every few years, uh, they set up this huge fence like around this gigantic area of trees and woodland and bushes. And the first time it happened, I'm like, what's going there? Like, What's going on? Why are they fencing it all off? And I show up the next day, and there's this thing there, a truck called Rent-A-Ruminant. And what they've done is deploy a bunch of goats into this area. And the goats hang out there for about two months. And they just eat, 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 eat. And they live in this little caged area and just are a natural way to help curb all the overgrowth. And then they board the goats up, take them to wherever the goats live, and it's clean for another year. And that they do that every couple of years. So you can imagine Sean's doing something like that but with rabbits. That's really what I'm trying to I'm say. I'm just here. imagining Sean now chewing on grass as he's going along. But no, uh, when I was in Hawaii a few weeks ago, actually there was a bunch of goats just doing that, mowing the lawn on the side of the highway. Yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah. When you said ruminants, I wondered where you were going with the goat story. I was a little alarmed. (laughs) (laughs) Especially because we're talking about Sean. Who knows what it could lead to? (laughs) Certainly nothing good. Sometimes you just got a goat for it. Oh. Oh, Oh, it's going to be a long, long night. (laughs) So Battle Bond has 254 cards in it. It has a release date of June 8th, 2018. And that's a very special day, and we'll talk about why around June. And it has an MSRP of three ninety nine a pack, so it's a regular price set, practically. And you only need four packs for a booster draft. Ooh. That I'm very curious to understand, like the way you guys change the pack distribution for booster and sealed, but I'm sure we'll discover that uh, as we go. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely recommend checking out my article that went up on Monday about how Battle Bond was created. And we put a lot of really careful stuff into allowing it to be a four pack per team draft format or a six pack per team sealed format. So check it out. And uh, yeah, that should help explain it. Wow, that's awesome. 
Yes, so listeners, you've had the opportunity to read that article before listening to this show, but we're going in blind, as it were. Lucky gamers who get to go to the GP Vegas will probably find their fill of Battle Bond since it comes out, what, the week before the GP? Hey, I'll be at GP Vegas. I'm one of those people. Yeah. Our listeners should go hunt down Phil and Gavin and go bond some battles. Will you be uh, bringing packs of Battle Bond with you, Gavin, for the impromptu game? Yeah, I've got two main things I want to bring with me, and those are packs of Battle Bond and Brawl decks. So I am going to be ready to throw down. Nice, nice. But not Brawl Brawl. No, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. I'll have Brawl decks, Commander decks, of course. I should probably have a box of Battle Bond at least by then. Gavin, would you now commit to being my partner or allowing me to be your partner in a game of Battle Bond? Well, with Shivam as our witness to this marriage, I will <laughs> certainly do that. Uh, the only thing is I told Sean Main I would do one with him because he was the lead vision designer and I was the lead set designer. So we got to do at least one. But yes, yeah. provided that there is time, I would love to play with you. Excellent. Oh, I we can't just do wait. some tag team, you know, it'll be great. So speaking of Battle Bond, I think we've made yeah. these listeners wait long enough for the card we hinted at. Or the card, we... at least some shady guy hinted at all the way back in the beginning. And, sh- and, and Shiva, <laughs> some shady guy, you've just been holding on to this and yeah. not telling us what it is. Yeah, tell oh, us, man. Shivam. But well, I got to tell you, I guess, right? Because it's the play of the game. I mean, no, I mean the card. The card is actually the play of the game. Six and two white for a sorcery that has exile all non-land permanents. But there's this other weird line of text on it that I don't quite understand. Assist. <laughs> Another player can pay up to six of this spell's cost. The most sensational plays send everyone home breathless. <laughs> Get it? Because it exiles on non-land permanence. Oh, man. This is this is baller, dude. This is a crazy card. So one thing we did with Battle Bond is at the common and uncommon level, a lot of the new cards we put into the set you know, are there to help make limited work. There's a couple things going on that are really there to support limited play. But at Rare and Mythic, if a card wasn't really doing its job to either be a commander card or a cube card or, you know, a really heavy, like, casual card outside of those formats or maybe a legacy card, I was like, what are we doing? And so I really wanted to help focus, especially the new cards, on being things that people would want to own and get a hold of. And... With assist, there's a bit of trickiness there because this is a mechanic that was definitely made to help glue limited together. Like it's super awesome to sit down and play two at a giant. You you have an assist card, and you know you and your teammate tap out on turn three to play a six mana assist card. That's super fun. But how are you going to make this mechanic work outside the format? And we don't expect people to go and play two at a giant constructed, really. Although some people might. It's probably a lot of fun. But you are going to play Commander and stuff like that. So with Assist, there's a couple rares in the set that have the mechanic that we thought would be things, and I thought would be things, and still do, that are cards that you can get someone else to help pay for because it's clear they want to help pay for it. For example, with Play of the Game, if Phil has no permanence in play, he's going to, or no non-land permanence in play, he's going to be pretty happy to help pay some mana for Play of the Game. Yeah, I will. When I was brainstorming things to do with this card, I realized that the turn after somebody cyclonic rifts you, it's probably very easy for you to turn to somebody else at the table and say, hey, you want to help me get this guy? And then just tap out, play play the game, and wipe his board as well. Oh, Shivam, that's good. Because <laughs> I was just like, look, man, turnabout is fair play. So if yep. we're going to start from the beginning, we're all going to start from the beginning. <laughs> Except because your cards are all in your hand because they got bounced, their cards are all in exile. Yep. Those are gone forever. Ours are gone till next turn. I like it. Nice. Yeah. And now we asked a couple of questions about assist being um, a new mechanic actually sort of exposes one of the mechanics of the game that we haven't talked about much. And that's the ability to back up if there's an illegal play being made. If you choose to cast this spell but don't have enough mana to cast it and another player won't join you in casting it, that's an illegal action. And you can just back it up and put the card back into your hand until later on or whenever you're ready that's uh rule 601 casting spells then there's a what is it rule 720 was the other one a, a well-researched man i must say well um you know the thing about uh, the, realistically it is true that you know technically the way this might work is you announce it and see if someone wants to help you pay for it and then if they don't it goes back to your hand whatever but really the way that this tended to work when we were trying it out in commander is just like hey guys 
I've got this thing. Who wants to help pay for it? Or more indirectly, like, hey, Shivam, you want to wipe the board right now? And then Shivam doesn't know what you have. And you're like, he's like, yeah, I'd happily help wipe the board right now. That sounds really great for me. All our opponent's stuff just got bounced back to their hand except for this one jerk. And you're like, great. Toss in four <laughs> mana. Let's put cast play of the game. And it kind of works out. And it can also be a fun political tool, you know? Maybe you've got it in your hand. And you're like, hey, who wants to, you know, who wants to do me a favor? Or, hey... You commit some mana, I'll help do you a favor. Because there's a little bit of jockeying you can do here with how much mana will you kick into this. Like, if I have six mana and you have six mana, we can definitely pay for it somehow, but how is that being distributed? And clearly, most often, you're going to want to get the the other person to try and pay a bunch because they don't have anything to do with their mana unless they have an instant or whatever. But, you know, maybe there's a little bit of jockeying. They're trying to keep up counterspell mana, and so there's some fun back and forth there. All right, Gavin, let me propose something. Let's say I have Vidalcan Ori in play, which lets me cast a spell as an instant, and you were about to get crushed in a, a combat that would kick you out of the game. Could I sit there and say, hey, man, I will exile everything on the table if you help me pay for it? Yeah, absolutely, and I'll help, I'll help pay for that, no problem. Yeah, it'll keep you alive for a turn. Yeah, it'll wipe the board, but hey... When I first saw this mechanic, my first thought was the Tempt with Discovery cards that came out in the first uh, Commander set, because it just seemed like you want to try to get other people at the table to buy in to help discount the cost and make just uh, this thing get even cooler. Yeah, and the, there's a couple effects that I think are really good fits for this, especially at Rare and for Commander play, and this is one that seemed pretty straightforward to us, because it's, it's really clear when people want this to happen. Sometimes if you know, you're asking people every single turn, do they want to help you cast your 4-4? It's like, no, I don't think I want to help you cast your 4-4. Four four. <laughs> but um, you know, with a spell like this, with a big splashy effect that resets the game, where it's very clear one person's behind, has a lot of commander potential. Also, I mean, while it's not the totes, the cheapest thing ever, 8 mana exile on non-land permanence is, isn't unreasonable. If people play Planar Cleansing at 6 mana, and yeah. this is 2 mana more one white fewer and it exiles so hey you know it's also just a card that's respectable to cast on its own sometimes yeah man i don't know though you would get kind of desperate if you're paying eight mana to uh exile everything right i gotta say if you're paying eight mana to exile everything and no one's willing to help you with it i don't know why you're exiling all your own permanents because you're clearly winning Um, (laughs) (laughs) fair fair point man this seems so exciting yeah my question though is this really the play of the game (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah so i think about battle bond and as we record this y'all have only seen this one card in the five lands that we showed off but That's the set right. has a much light more a much more lighthearted tone than normal and we did do some really fun stuff we had to put some names on cards that make me smile to the ends of my mouth like luxury and, suite <laughs> like luxury suite yeah and there's luxury suites good that's only the beginning of, of the fun names I would like to propose that the lands be called baddie lands because they're not buddy lands. They're what enemies you have in play. I think I'm on team crowd land because three's a crowd. Fair. But, okay, fine. Crowd land's good. Uh, but anyway, I, lo- I like this because the name play of the game is awesome. And actually, I was working with Kelly Diggs on the naming for a lot of, a lot of the cards in this set. And we went back and forth on the name of this for a while. And eventually, we really settled on play of the game because one is just a cool sports term. People say all the time, people know what this means. It makes a lot of sense um, as having that card name in our set. And two, the meme potential with this is just endless. You could do some pretty funny things. And Reddit, I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with for this. <laughs> I don't know. It's like when I think play of the game and see a board wipe, I'm like, well, it's a play of the game because there's no game left to play. But the art looks really cool. It reminds me of uh, Final Fantasy X and the... Um... Titus and his uh, blitzball matches with the floating <laughs> blue circles and everything. Yeah. Oh, man. this The theming of this set is just, like, on point. And we've only seen, like, a handful of cards so far. I mean, it really is crazy. I just, I dread seeing this, right? You know, because I like my rocks. I like, I like my things. <laughs> all of my things. And now suddenly you're going to take them all away from me. And that's terrible. And take them away, like, completely Forever. out of reach with the exception of maybe, you know, a handful of cards that... That can grab exiled things. Jeez, why are you doing this to us, Gavin? You know who's sitting there laughing at this? Squee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. So this is, like you already mentioned, one of the other cards this is like, and there are a couple of others. There's like a Chroma's Vengeance, which is still only destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments, so not even all permanents, just 
you know, your planeswalkers would survive that. Descend upon the sinful, that was uh, fairly recent. That's four in white, white as well. Exile all creatures um, with a delirium rider bonus. Put a four, four white angel creature token with flying onto the battlefield, yada, yada, yada. Um, but that's just creatures for six mana. This is, even if you have to pay it yourself, this is, like you said, this is everything and it's exile. We haven't really done that, right? It's just exile no. and land permanent. Simple, four words, but it means a lot, especially in Commander. Yeah. Urza's Ruinous Blast for only five mana. Exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary, so that's not going to get their commanders. Yeah, actually, the more I think about it, the more like yeah. I can think of many situations where a hard reset like this would have just saved my butt. Yeah. Because let's say you're playing against, like I don't know, Saltai or Muldrotha or something, and it's like, okay, well, you destroyed all my guys. Next turn, they're all coming back. It's like, well, no, now they're all exiled, so bye. Yeah. Uh, I'm a fan. This is going to be cool. There are a couple of cards that will actually exile as well. And Merciless Eviction, of course, is a classic. Four and white and a black. And, but, yeah, but it's modal. You have to choose a permanent type and get rid of it. Ugh. Final Judgment is uh, all creatures. <laughs> Four and white, white. So, yeah, it's like six mana is the barrier, except for this Dimensional Breach. But then that gives things back. So dimensional breach for five and white, white. Remove all permanents from the game. This is the old school word. I've never even seen this card. As long as any of those cards remain removed from the game, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player returns one of the removed cards he or she owns to play. That's pretty neat. Wow, that reminds me of uh, Fall of the Thran, the saga from Dominaria, right? Yeah. Well, that's pretty neat. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that card. I just, Gavin, I don't want to see this card unless I'm casting it. <laughs> exactly. Well, hopefully you can put it in some of your decks and, uh, you know, you'll be the one casting it, not your opponents. Well, thank you very much for joining <laughs> us, Gavin. <laughs> This is exciting. I'm glad you guys are excited about it. And this is just, you've only got a small taste of the fun Battle Bond stuff to come. There's so much goodness packed in the set. A few really, really exciting cards. And I'm frankly just stoked to go out and play. It'll be awesome to sit down with a teammate playing Magic. And, um, you know, I can't stress how great this set is to not just play with your really tight Magic friends, but also to bring someone in who hasn't played in a while or a significant other who plays a little yeah. less. Because Two at a Giant is so good for that kind of gameplay. And, it, you know, you just get to be there with with your friend playing Magic. I don't know. I, I, I just am in love with this set. So I, I'm so happy I got to show off this card with you all. And I look forward to seeing it on tables for years to come. To our listeners who are dying for more stories about Battle Bond. We're going to have Gavin on after all of the cards are previewed, and then we will talk and talk and talk. We might even get a two for well, out of this. Well, knowing Gavin, it'll be like 12 shows that we record. <laughs> <laughs> Week 16 of Battle Bond discussion. We're still here. No one's eaten for months. Sean's rabbits are the only thing holding us over. <laughs> Oh, boy. I can't wait for that show. And, and listeners, you have no idea what restraint we're exercising right now just talking about this one card that we got uh, for free. <laughs> yeah. From some shady guy. Wizards gave us this preview. Thank you very much, Wizards. It's a wonderful preview card. Play of the game. Hmm. Play of the game. It's kind of like the penultimate play of the game, though. That's what I'm saying. Isn't it just the ultimate play of the game? Well, you play this, and then you play the the play of the game to oh, kill right, somebody. Oh, right, right, right. Fair, fair. But, you know, penultimate is too long. They would have had to compress that. It would probably have been seven and a white or something. Play ultimate of the game. <laughs> play of the game, people. This is going to be awesome to cast, not to receive. Oh, God. Yeah, this is going to be fun to be on the wrong side of. What? And by fun, I mean not fun. Yeah, I was... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, 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 we just said how horrible it's going to be oh, to have this cast on us. miserable. <laughs> Shivam always has fun playing, you know? All right, you see, we're, we're getting back into it, and it is kind of late, listeners. So we will say goodbye to you, and thank you, of course, listeners. You rock for staying this long and hanging out with us. Gavin, thank you very much for hanging out with us. And on such short notice, this was amazing. We got so lucky. Well, it's my pleasure. If it's Battle Bond related, it's... I've spent two years not talking about this set. Now is finally my time to talk about this set. So I have so mm -hmm. many things to say, and I am happy to talk about this card with you, you all. And yeah. I hope you really enjoy the set. Oh, man, I can't wait till you can finally talk completely about this, because I really want to start digging into all yep. the stories. And frankly, yep. I'm just interested as a designer to both hear all the things people like, 
and all the things that they don't like, because I think that that's awesome, but I'm sure there'll be some things that I'll get criticism about. And I always look forward to growing on that too. So please, if you have any feedback on the set one way or another, positive or uh, negative, I would love to hear what you have to say. So hit me up on Twitter and give me your thoughts. Yeah. So what is your Twitter address? Very easy. It's my name, at Gavin Verhey. Excellent. Got that one early before the other the other imposters could have locked it down. Yeah. I mean, poor <laughs> Gavin Verhey 6. Yeah, that, that, that guy. <laughs> Get X Gavin Verhey X. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Twitter. And I'm sure as we record this, of course, we're talking to people of the future. But today, on release day for this set, you know that there's criticism already on Twitter. So make sure you tag Gavin Verhey into those conversations so that he can talk about just why he had to exile all of your things. And I promise <laughs> you'll get your enemy land someday, okay? I know, I know that everyone wants to t- talk to me about th- that right now. The cycle is pretty awesome. It'll get completed. I have confidence in that. All I'm yeah. saying is that I was doing an inventory and I realized like two-thirds of my deck are enemy color decks. And I'm just like, this is just unfair <laughs> well if, if you check out my article that went up on monday um there's a great reason why we ended up this going morning. with allied color lands so let's go oh, go and I check that out it. god all these teasers gavin it's, it's funny because by the time people listen to this they're not gonna be teasers anymore they're like yeah that's old news that was yesterday's reddit thread yeah <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, we we have to thank you again because we need to say special thanks to our patrons. (laughs) Uh, Yes, bring the thanks on. As a patron of the show, I'm happy to kick in a dollar a show. It's my pleasure. Listeners, you have no idea how much that actually helps us. It genuinely does. So thank you very much, patrons. Without your continued support, we couldn't continue to bring you this show at the quality we do. Thank you very much. And tune in next month. Remember the patron contest. You must be an active patron on June 8th. And next month, we'll be talking about our top contributors again. So get in there and change your Patreon names, and we will read them as written, even if it means we have to bleep them. <laughs> You can reach us by going to our website, commanderandmtg.com. Our email is cast at commanderandmtg.com. You can find us on all of the social medias by searching for Commander and MTG Podcast. This episode was edited by David Mitchell. Our theme song was created for the podcast by Nate Burgess. Our logo was created for the podcast by Mr. Picto with assistance from Kelly DeLuca. You can find more art from Mr. Picto by going to mrpicto.co.uk. Special thanks to tech whizzes Jesse Thompson and Graham Frank and to Justin for the server space. Commander at MTG Podcast is unofficial fan content permitted under the fan content policy. It has not been approved or endorsed by Wizards. Portions of the materials used are property of Wizards of the Coast. Copyright Wizards of the Coast, LLC. Gavin, by long-standing tradition, would you take us out? The bond of a podcast can always be felt, and I will do battle with you anytime. Thank you, Commanderin.